This is the video you guys have all been waiting for. I'm going to rank all 23 of the Marvel films. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, I'm finally, finally ranking all 23 of the Marvel movies. As you know, I love Marvel, so I've been looking forward to doing this video for you guys. I'm going to try to do it as quickly as possible because there's a ton of movies on here and I don't want to go into huge detail of the ranking. If you are new here at the channel and you love movie content, Blu-ray trips, and award season, you're going to want to hit that red subscribe down below. And I hope you guys are all surviving your quarantine or limiting yourself to going outside. Let me know down below. How are you doing? What have you been doing? What have you been watching? Okay, let's start with the rank. I think we know what's at the very bottom. It's Thor The Dark World. This is at the bottom of every Marvel fans list and I, I can't disagree. It's kind of boring and it's a little bit long. I don't know. It's, while you're watching it, it just seems like, God, is this like ending already? That's, that's the reasoning. It, it's just, it, it just, I don't know. It just isn't satisfying, I guess. Number 22, I put The Incredible Hulk. I rewatched this recently and kind of the main reason for me is that with the opening credits, we pretty much get the entire crux of the story and I felt like that was skipped over. I felt like that was Bruce Banner's origin story and that should have been the main, that should have been the first Hulk movie. You know what I mean? Like how he turns into the Incredible Hulk. That should have been the movie. We didn't have that. We had it in the opening credits. And then pretty much the movie itself could have been a second film. So I feel like we were kind of gypped out of Bruce Banner's origin story. Plus, I have to say, I am kind of partial to Mark Ruffalo as being our Hulk and not necessarily Edward Norton. Although I do feel that Edward Norton did do a good job. Number 21, I put Doctor Strange. I've only seen it one time. I have to rewatch this. But my main reasoning is I was kind of bored with Doctor Strange. And I know that it is purely an origin story. There really wasn't a lot of action going on. I have to rewatch this. It's on my list to rewatch because I feel like if I do, I might appreciate it more and it might go higher in my ranking because I do like Doctor, Doctor Strange in Infinity War and in Endgame. He played very vital roles in both of those movies. So I... I just need to rewatch it. But for right now, it's at 21. 20, I'm putting Iron Man 2 because there was just too many things happening. There was too many villains. You had two villains and you had um, Tony Stark's past and his heart issue, like everything going on. It was just, it was a slew of ideas. And when anyone tries to do that, the movie just doesn't hold up as well. So Iron Man 2 is very low on my list. Number 19, I'm putting Ant-Man and the Wasp because it's a good movie. It's, it's like okay, but it's not epic. It's not an epic film. It's not Endgame. It's not the first Iron Man. So it's at 19. I'm looking at my notes, by the way. This is my list. So number 18, I'm putting Iron Man 3. It's a little bit higher than Iron Man 2 only because of Gwyneth Paltrow at the very end. That's what sold this entire movie for me was Pepper Potts at the very end, pretty much saving the day and kicking ass. That edged out Iron Man 2 just a little bit. Otherwise, the movies would have been flip-flopped. But for me with Iron Man 3, the whole reveal of of it not even being, what what's his name, the, the Mandarin, like, that was lame. I didn't like that storyline. And plus, I thought the original villain was very lame. I can't remember his name right now. But the, I, I thought the whole storyline was very weak. But at the very end, it kind of went up a little bit. You know what I'm saying. Number 17, I'm putting Thor. I recently rewatched this as well. It's a solid origin film. But there are parts where it kind of lags just a little bit. There's not a lot of action going on sometimes. I do enjoy the casting of Anthony Hopkins and Rene Russo as Thor's parents. I thought that was brilliant. 
but I want to see more of Renee Russo. I thought she was just there for like, oh, there she is. And then she's gone. You only see her for about two seconds. Um, it's okay. It's an all right, but it's not, it's just not there. It's not there. Number 16, I put Ant-Man, just like Ant-Man and the Wasp. It's an okay movie. It's good for Marvel. I feel like the funnier Marvel films like Ant-Man and Thor Ragnarok, they don't get as, well, Thag Thor Ragnarok gets acclaim, but I feel like Ant-Man really doesn't. It's kind of like the bastard child of the Marvel series. And I just wish it would, I don't know. I just want more for Ant-Man because Paul Rudd, I feel like is Ant-Man. Like he's so good in the role and he was very important in Endgame. And for Ant-Man 3, which did get confirmed, by the way, I did hear about that. And I, there's going to be a different writer. So I feel like they're going to go in a different direction. And I hope they just revamp everything and just do better for Ant-Man. Give him more more to do. I don't know. Just, just amp up the entire series. Number 15, I'm putting Avengers Age of Ultron. If you watch my Avengers rank list, which I hope you have, if you haven't, click down below and find it. I, this was at the bottom of my Avengers rank list because there's just so many things going on, much like Iron Man 2, Avengers Age of Ultron. You have Ultron, you have the twins, you have all these multiple storylines going on, all the Avengers going on. There's just so much happening. And then there's kind of a lot of wasted time, like that entire party scene at Tony's house. Like, what? Did we really need that? I don't know. It just felt like they were stretching the movie unnecessarily and then kind of like jam packing everything at the end. I don't know. There just wasn't a balance. There wasn't a good balance in Age of Ultron. I wanted better. All right. Number 14, I'm putting Guardians of the Galaxy 2. I love the Guardians. I do. I love these movies. However, Guardians 2 kind of lagged kind of boring. Kurt Russell as the villain. I mean, I don't know. I wasn't really that much into it as the first one. So I'm looking forward to what they're going to do with Guardians 3. I hope they just like kick it up a notch back to the vibe of Guardians 1. Number 13, I have Captain Marvel. This is kind of higher on my list because I know a lot of people did not enjoy Captain Marvel. I did. I liked Captain Marvel. I saw it in Dolby and I thought it was a great experience. I just wish for Captain Marvel 2, which just got the green light, by the way. It's coming in 2022, I believe. Um, I'm hoping that Brie Larson gives us a little bit more personality. I hope she just really comes out of the role and just, I don't know, just more personality. That That's just really all she has to do. Just give us more, Brie. Don't be so stoic, which I know she kind of had to do in the first one because of the whole memory loss situation, but you know who you are now. So show us who you are. Show us what you got. And I want to see her be so powerful. I'm looking forward to that. Number 12, I put Spider-Man Far From Home. It's a solid movie. I love Tom Holland as Spider-Man Peter Parker, but however, in this movie, it did kind of lag in the first like 20, 25 minutes, but I did enjoy how they explained the whole blip situation. Jake Gyllenhaal as Mysterio, I thought was spot on perfect. He was a great villain. It was a great story and the way that they left it on that cliffhanger was really good. Number 11, I put Black Panther. Scandalous, I know. Black Panther's not even in my top 10. I'm being different. Um, it's a good, solid origin story for the Black Panther universe. I like, what's his name? Chadwick Boseman as T'Challa, as Black Panther. I think he's great. I love every, every all the Marvel casting, I think, is incredibly awesome. But I just didn't get the hype. I feel like this movie was like before I saw it, before I was really into Marvel, I was like, wow, everyone's talking about this Black Panther. This must be like freaking amazing. And then by the time I finally saw it, I was like, yeah, it's a good movie. But why is it so like overhyped? I feel like this movie was so overhyped. I don't know, but it's solid at number 11. 
Number 10, cracking into the top 10, I bought Captain America the First Avenger because this is, in my opinion, the most solid origin story for any of the Avengers that we have. It takes place in a different time period. I just really enjoyed it. I know a lot of people disagree with this, but I like Captain America, the first Avenger. Number nine is Thor Ragnarok. This film I absolutely loved and adored, and it's pretty much all because of Taika Waititi. He took this film, he gave it a 180, because we were so used to Thor being dark and dingy and so serious. Taika Waititi takes it, spins it around. He gives it humor. He gives it color. He gives it strong characters. Not that we didn't have strong characters, but even more, especially with the introduction of Valkyrie. So I just absolutely loved it. I do have to rewatch this. It's been a while since I've seen it. And I'm looking forward to what he's going to do with Thor 4. You've got the Guardians coming in. Christian Bale is the villain. It's going to be awesome. Number eight, I put the Guardians of the Galaxy. This movie is unlike any other of the Marvel films out there. It was kind of weird. You've got a talking raccoon and a tree, but it works. And it's all because of the brilliancy of James Gunn and what he does with this universe. He knows it so well. He's just a master. And I'm so happy that he's back for volume three. And I'm excited for Suicide Squad. I know that's DC, but I just, I love James Gunn and what he does. So I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. And that's why uh, Guardians of the Galaxy is at number eight for me. Number seven, I have Spider-Man Homecoming. This was the first time we got to see Tom Holland as Spider-Man. We saw him a little bit in Civil War in the airport scene, but this was his first movie. And this really shows the brilliancy of Tom Holland and what he can do and the balance that he plays between being a high school teenager and then being Spider-Man. I just think he balances it so perfectly. Plus you have the brilliant villain of Michael Keaton as Vulture, that moment in the car is unlike anything we've ever seen before. You felt, oh, you felt the tension in the air. Every, it was great. It was spot on. Love this film. Number six, we're almost at the top five. Number six is Iron Man. That's right. Iron Man is not in my top five, guys. Iron Man is number six. This was the movie that started it all. I thought it was brilliant to open up this film with Back in Black with that song that gave us the vibe of who Tony Stark is. We got it right off the bat playing that intro. And it's a film that you love from beginning to end. Honestly, it is just so good. There's so many moments. You really start to understand the, the character of Tony Stark and where he's coming from and his relationship, non-relationships. And I just absolutely loved it. Number five, let's get into the top five. But before we do, let me know down in the comments What's your rank? Who's in your top five? And if you haven't subscribed, hit that red button. All right, number five, I put The Avengers because this was the very first time we had multiple superheroes in one movie at the same time. Joss Whedon took on this incredible task of putting six Avengers all together and it really paid off. That scene when they're in New York, they're in the circle and the camera goes around. If you do not get chill bumps all over your body when that happens, you're goddamn lying. That is one of the most epic moments we've ever had. And I wish I could have seen this in the movie theater in 2012 when it came out. I wasn't into Marvel back then like I am now. I would have loved to see that on the screen. Can we re-release that please? Like when movie theaters open back up for like a 20th anniversary, I would love to see that. But the Avengers is awesome. That's at number five. Number four is Captain America Civil War. This was groundbreaking because you had Avengers going against Avengers. They both have their causes that they're fighting for. And then you have the underlying storyline of the feud between Iron Man and Captain America with Bucky. It rips your heart out because the good guys are fighting against each other. And you just, you just want to shake them and be like, what are you doing? Stop it. It's, it's so emotional. It takes you all your emotions are all over the place in civil war. It's just so good. 
Number three, I have Captain America Winter Soldier. I absolutely love this film. The Russo brothers did such an amazing job. The fight sequences are incredible. You have Falcon, you have Bucky, you have Black Widow with Captain America. It is just absolutely an amazing movie. Number two and number one, both Avengers movies that I have not said yet. This was so difficult for me to make this decision because everyone knows how much I love Endgame, but Infinity War is just so good. So who do you think is at number two and number one? Number two is Avengers Endgame. I know it's going to be shocking to a lot of people, but I'm putting Endgame at number two solely because this was a three-hour film. This was the recovery film after what happened in Infinity War. We don't know where everyone's at, what is going to happen. Everyone is emotionally recovering from the snap. And that's because a lot of... Uh, we're setting up to say goodbye in this film. We didn't know it as an audience yet, but they knew. The directors, the producers, the writers, they knew what was going to happen. So they were setting up a lot of scenes for our actors to say goodbye. Iron Man, Tony Stark with Pepper Potts and his daughter, Black Widow with her scene with Captain America. And we didn't really get a lot of action until the very end in the epic battle scene. I actually wish that that scene was a little bit longer because those mo I could watch that 10,000 times. It's just absolutely epic and unbelievable. It was very, it, this film was more emotional than Infinity War. I love it, but it's at number two. My number one, obviously, is Infinity War. And this is because... It has so many epic moments. You have Iron Man meeting Tony Stark. Iron Man meeting Tony Stark. Iron Man meeting Doctor Strange in the park for the first time. You have their bantering together and them fighting in the city. And then you have Thor's entrance, his epic entrance in the Wakanda battle. I love it. I love it. And then you have the battle in Wakanda itself. It is so fantastic. And then the very end, when Thor misses and doesn't chop off his head and the snap happens and everyone starts dusting, that moment right there, your heart breaks. I was watching it in the movie theater and I was like, what? <laughs> when they did not win in the very end, Avengers don't lose. And for them to not win... It, it literally broke your heart. So along with fight scenes and action, Infinity War also had emotion as well. It had everything all combined perfectly. So that is my ranking of all 23 MCU films. I hope you enjoyed this. Whew, it took me a lot to remember all of that. But let me know your list down below. Which films do you love? Which films do you hate? Like and comment. And I'll see you next time.